Okay, so thanks Alex. We're going to take a look at some tools related to consumer product design now that have improved in 2015. Uh, and the first is related to sketching. So if we just go into this sketch here and take a look, we've got a spline defined as a normal spline here, uh, which is not unusual prior to 2014. What we can now do is we can right click on this spline and we can choose to convert it into the new style spline option that we had last year. So we're just going to say yes here and it converts it into a style spline with a number of points that we can control, like so. So we can start to get some, uh, some additional functionality back into that spline. You can also take a style spline and convert that over into a normal spline as well if you want to. A limitation that's been addressed in this release is uh, related to the split tool. So we've always had the ability to split bodies with a sketch, but that support or support for that has now been extended into the surface bodies tool as well. So we can cut a component here with a sketch uh, and create separate surface bodies out of it. So here if I just pick one of those and isolate it, you can see now that's a completely separate surface body. Within the spline on surface tool, that has now been improved within this version as well. So here, if we just start our spline out, you'll see as we transverse across multiple faces, that the behavior is a lot better than it has been in previous releases. So here we'll just add on one, and then we'll go ahead and we'll create another one of those on the opposing side. So here you can see the behavior is just a lot more predictable than when it was before and it certainly enables us to span multiple faces a lot easier. We can also apply relationships across these items and use the drag functionality to drag that around if we want to. Okay, so we'll just exit out of that sketch and then we'll use uh, the trim tool to create a number of bodies. So we're going to use our sketch just to trim this tool and we're going to say we want to keep this bit here. So we've now got quite a complicated surface here that we want to uh, just focus on for a moment. And often, you know, if you're manufacturing this type of thing, you'll want to know what that looks like in a developed flat pattern. And in previous releases, that would have been very, very awkward, if not impossible for us to do. We might have to try some sheet metal tools to get that to work, but it would be, it would be a real job. Uh, in 2015 we've now seen the introduction of a tool called Surface Flatten. So I can now pick the surface bodies that I want to flatten, just using on screen here. Uh, I can choose a control point to flatten from, so we'll take that midpoint there. And what the system does is it applies a mesh over the top of that surface and then calculates the flattened variant of each of those sections. So you'll see here in yellow we get a, a preview of what the flattened variant of that surface looks like. We can also add control curves to further control the shape in there as well. So if we add that on, you'll see now we've got a superimposed flattened variant of that surface on the screen. There are some other things that we can do here, so we can create uh, what's referred to as a deformation plot to look at areas of the surface that are in stretch and compression, so that we might further analyse where problems will come in in manufacture in terms of any ripping or creasing of the material. Once we're happy with it, on the right click menu we can export to DXF directly from here. So if we just uh, go through the process, you'll see that we now get a DXF showing us the flattened variant of that surface. So I can see this being a really powerful tool for those, uh, for those people who need something like this. It's certainly worth looking at anyway. Okay, if we just switch over to another example here. Uh, so. Uh, a sort of object that we're going to focus on for the next few enhancements. One of those is the support now for asymmetrical fillets within the fillet tool. So we can now start specifying different radiuses for different faces all within the fillet tool. So this is something that would have uh, required a little bit more work in previous versions but here we can just choose the asymmetric option and make the changes that we want to make. And that makes things uh, a whole lot easier there. Okay, so if we just look at the underside uh, here, we've got a surface uh, created on the top using a fill surface tool. If we just edit that feature just for a moment, we'll look at some of the other additional options that we now have in here. So sometimes on surface creation, you may want to understand how 
uh, that's actually or what level of curvature we're getting with the neighboring sides we can now toggle on options for curvature combs if we just scale those down a little bit here so we can start to visually see what the curvature is on that surface before we choose to create it we can also choose to plot the zebra stripe system over the top as well so all within the uh, the editing or creation of that surface so some quite nice improvements there another area that uh, has seen some improvements is uh, open cuts as we would call them so here we've got an open profile sketch if I want to use that as a cut in previous releases the end conditions would have defaulted to through all uh, and we wouldn't have had a huge amount of control over that that was just the default option for any open profile that you created we now have the ability to use the blind end condition and specify depth but we can also start to include selected contours within here so you'll know from uh, some of the things we've been through in the past instant 3d allows us to p pick certain sections of the model where model contours cut across the sketch so here we can use that open profile to generate that cut very very easily so quite a nice limitation that's been addressed there so we'll just switch ourselves over to this view here now and we'll take a look uh, at one of the other things that we can do okay so within the reference geometry tool we've seen some improvements here so for creation of planes I can choose a point now and choose an additional option which is to create a plane parallel to the screen so if I click this option and just say OK uh, and just put myself into that section view you'll see it generated the plane normal to the screen as I was looking at that object so let's say we uh, update our screen view we can now make a modification to that plane and say update plane and it will revise that normal to plane uh, at any point as we're working through our model so that can really help us to start creating planes at you know angles and orientations that we wouldn't have been able to do in the past another improvement that we've seen that we can uh, briefly show is the support in PhotoView 360 for the render region option so within here now we can specify that we want to render a region so we can zoom in on a region like so and then use the integrated preview and it's only going to render anything inside that box okay so in summary we've seen a new flattened surface tool the ability to convert splines to style splines and then the reverse we can use uh, sketches to split surfaces into bodies we've seen an improved spline on surface option the asymmetrical fillets uh, the extension to the open profile cuts, the curvature analysis within the surfacing tools, the ability to create a plane normal to the screen and also now the photo view 360 render region option. Okay that brings us to the end of the main sort of bulk of the updates in SolidWorks 2015 but we're going to run through what else is new now.